All right. Uh, still a little sunlight over here. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Akin wa akwatiyam. First off, I want to salute you all in the name of Ahayabash and Mishaya Barakatam. Just blessing you all in the name of the Most High and in Christ. Um, tonight's lesson will be covering pretty much uh, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, which is in dealing with marriage. So I guess for your notes, you can title this Lesson Marriage According to the Bible. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into the whole chapter, uh, the seventh chapter. It does um, start to go into something different. So we'll be covering uh, verses 1 through 17 and also with precepts as well. All right. So, excuse me. So, brothers and sisters, you know, please take notes. And uh, most high willing, through the Spirit, we'll be all edified in, uh, in getting further understanding on marriage, all right, according to the Bible. All right. So first scripture we're going to get into is um, an example of, you know, one of our forefathers and how they dealt with, you know, the, in the process of marriage and, you know, how how um, how they got their wife, all right? So first scripture we're getting to is Genesis chapter 24, verse 13, okay? Once again, uh, my lock, am I coming in clear? Yeah, yeah, you sound better right there. All right, sounds good. All yeah. right, so first scripture once again, excuse me, First scripture, once again, is Genesis chapter 24, verse 13, in dealing with the process of marriage. Now, when we come to the scriptures and, you know, we see how, this, how the Most High wants, you know, righteous brothers and sisters in uh, dealing with marriage, it's, it's contrary to how, you know, it's set up here in society, in this world. In this world, you know, you're taught, oh, you know, we're just dating, you know, we're friends with benefits, and, you, you know, you could be boyfriend and girlfriend for 15 years and just, you know, never make that commitment, and that's allowed, you know. And when we deal with the scriptures, you know, shacking up with someone is not allowed according to the scriptures, you understand. If you're not going to make the oath to um, be a husband or be a wife, you know, to, to your other, you know, you shouldn't be dealing with one another, all right? Because you're just shacking up and you're just, oh, man, I just, want to, I just want it, you know, to lay down, all right? When we come to the scriptures, that's not how our foremothers and our forefathers dealt. And, they, and like Paul tells us, you know, the, the writings are for our learning. You know, the old writings are for our learning. So when we learn about our foremothers and forefathers and we come back to, you know, the, our culture as Israelites, we understand that, it's contrary to what they're teaching us here in this world that we live in today. So it's very important that, you know, we separate ourselves, you know, understand? Like the scripture said, we must be holy, you know, set apart, uh, separate ourselves from what society has set up in, you know, for marriage. Because it's uh, something completely different from how the scripture, how the Most High has set it up. All right? And so tonight, um, Most High willing through his spirit, uh, brothers and sisters will, you know, get further edification uh, on this topic of marriage, okay? So the first scripture we're getting into tonight is Genesis chapter 24, and we're going to start at verse 13. All right, that's uh, Genesis chapter 24, verse 13. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men come out to draw water. So right here you have Abraham's servant who was set on a mission to get, to bring back Isaac's wife. That's what this mission was. Okay, just you know, just in a nutshell, it's it's a um, you know a lengthy story. So we're gonna try to cut it down so we can just get the meat of it and get the understanding of you know what's going on here. All right, go ahead. Verse fourteen. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Right, so that, that, was, that was his mission. You know, he, he, he was sitting by the well, 
and then the, the, the damsel, you know, the woman who comes up and, uh, you know, gives him some water and for his camels, you know, that's the one. Okay, go ahead. Verse 15, and it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 16. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Right. And as a quick side note, we see that virgin and neither had any man known her. They had to make that clear because, like, like in society, they tell you a virgin is someone who has never been dealt with. But when we read the scripture, a virgin actually is a woman of marriageable age. All right, just a quick side note for, you know, when those uh, topics of immaculate conception come up, you have a precept right there. Go ahead. Verse 17. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me. I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 24, verse 18. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. Okay, so this is the one who he's looking for, that Abraham's servant is looking for, that uh, Abraham sent him out to go and look for. He found it, Rebecca. Okay, go ahead. Verse 19, and when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until, he, until they have done drinking. Okay, jump down to verse, um, verse 22. Verse 22, and it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. Go ahead. So he had Verse gifts 22. for her. He didn't just show up empty-handed. Okay, go ahead. And this Verse is 22. a dim water culture, you know, as Israelites, as, you know, uh, you know, in following the customs of our foremothers and our forefathers. Okay, go ahead. Verse 23. And said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? All right, now look, let's now that we understand that you know he found her. Let's jump down to verse uh, fifty-one. All right, jump down to verse fifty-one. All right, in in between verses, uh, what we at twenty-four and tw and fifty-one, he's had a process of the you know the servant. Uh, coming in, coming and lodging into Rebecca's home, and uh, you know, giving gifts to not only Rebecca but also to her brother, and you know, he's just letting it, let letting the family know, you know, who he who he represents, who you know, who uh, whose servant he is, and and what he's here to do. Okay, let's go ahead and jump down to verse uh, fifty one. Genesis chapter twenty four, verse fifty one. Behold, Rebecca is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, mm -hmm. as the Most High hath spoken. Right, go ahead. Verse 52, and it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Most High, bowing himself to the earth. Right, because why? The Most High, you know, he, he trusted in the Most High, and, you know, it came to pass. Okay, now go ahead, read the next part. Verse 53, and the servant brought forth jewels of silver and mm -hmm. jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Right, so we see that not only did he give it to Rebekah, but also to the family. All right, another custom of our, our forefathers and our forebrothers. All right. Now, in here in society, you just uh, show up one day to your to your father-in-law and just say, oh, we're pregnant, we're getting married. You know, that's not how we deal. 
That's not how we, you know, dealt in the past. When our forefathers laid down the examples that we must follow, they were, you know, uh, Isaac wasn't showing up with Rebecca to her father and saying, okay, we're pregnant, you know, now we have to get married. And, and, and this is why, you know, it's important that brothers and sisters understand that, you know, when you deal intimately with, with, with um, you know, a, a sister or, you know, or a brother, vice versa, understand that, you know, those things can happen, and that, that's why, you know, brothers and sisters should wait. You know, it should be at least like, a, you know, seven months or, you know, if it takes longer, you know, to get to know one another. Because in society, and, and, you know, what they teach out there is just go, oh, man, you got to, you know, you got to get it in. Oh, you're not having, you're not getting any, there's something wrong with you, right? This is what they're pushing. And they, you know, they talk about, oh, man, you're still a virgin. Oh, man, you know, they make fun of you, right? So, it, so society teaches you just go out and lay with whoever you want to lay with. But... You know, this is why it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's in the process of coming back to our culture. We understand that our brothers and sisters have been destroyed for lack of knowledge, and they don't understand, you know, uh, how, to, how to marry according to the scriptures. All right, so this is why we must go to the examples that our forefathers, foremothers set before us so we get the understanding and follow in their footsteps. All right? Because Isaac, Isaac, you know, he's a, right, a righteous man. Receive, receive the promises of the Most High. So, you know, that's a great example who we should follow, you know, uh, you know, in, in concerning marriage, how he dealt, okay? Um, well, verse left off 53. Let's uh, go ahead and jump down to verse, uh, let's go ahead and jump down to verse 61. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 24, verse 61. And so Rebecca now, arose. Real quick, let me just get a little summary and then we'll jump a couple of verses. Uh, Rebecca has been given to, you know, the, the servant for to be uh, Abraham's son's uh, wife. All right, now, uh, you know, he, uh, Rebecca and the servant are going back to, uh, to Isaac. Okay, go ahead. Verse 61, and Rebecca arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed that man. And the servant took Rebecca and went his way. Go ahead. Verse 62. And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lahoroi, for he dwelt in the south country. Verse 63. Go ahead. And, I, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even tide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Verse 64. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 65. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 66. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. All right, so you let him know you know what, what we just read in the previous verses uh, about you know giving the gifts and, and so on and so forth. Okay, go ahead. Verse sixty-seven. And Isaac brought her into her mother's tent. And Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So we see that this is how, you know, this is how forefather Isaac, you know, you know, the process that he went through, you know, uh, to get his wife. Okay, you had, you know, the gifts given to the family, uh, so on and so forth. And then what happened? They came and they, you know, we, we know what happened in, in Sarah in, in his mother's tent. Okay, he took Rebecca and she became his wife. All right, there was no priest in there who, who gave them, okay, say your vows, this and this. No, that's that's not how it went, how they're teaching you in society, okay? We understand that, you know, when two become one, you know, this, this is what is considered marriage according to the scriptures, okay? This is why it's very important that brothers and sisters aren't going around and shacking up, all right? Committing fornication, just being whoremongers, all right, and whores, just going around and sleeping with whoever, Okay, this is why Christ told. Let's get that scripture um, real quick. Uh, Saint John chapter four, 
when he talked to the Samaritan woman and told her to bring bring your husband. Okay? Let's get that. All right. That's uh, St. John. We're going to, uh, real quick, uh, St. John, chapter 4, verse 16. All right. Once again, uh, St. John, chapter 4, verse 16. And, 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 you know, we're going to show through the scriptures how uh, when you deal with, with with someone, you know, according to the according to the scriptures, that's who you're married to. Okay. So once again, uh, Saint John chapter four verse sixteen. Saint John chapter four verse sixteen. Yeshua saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. All right. Speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well, he says, Go and get your husband. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yeshia said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. So you say that you have no husband. Okay, go ahead. Verse 18, for thou hast had five husbands. Mm -hmm. and, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that saidst thou truly. Right, so we see that, you know, we know that this, this uh, Samaritan woman had five of us. Now, what is Christ talking about? You know, she was dealing with these guys, okay? And the guy who you're with right now, that's not your husband, okay? And showing, and, and just a quick side note, in showing, you know, when, when you're dealing with someone, that is your husband or your wife, okay? Now, let's get back to it. Now, we're going to get into Tobit, all right? The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 9, in your Apocrypha. Once again, that's Tobit. Chapter 7, verse 9. And this is just another, you know, uh, example for our learning to, you know, look to when we want to see, you know, uh, you know, the process of marriage, okay? How, how does one go about and get marriage, married? We see what, you know, what our forefather Isaac did. Now let's go to another one of our forefathers, uh, Tobit, okay, in your Apocrypha. Once again, that's Tobit. Chapter 7, verse 9. All right? No, no worry. We, exactly. we're, we're, we're still going to go into uh, 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. But first, you know, we want to you know, just lay the foundation and get understanding first. Okay? Once again, that's Tobit, chapter 7, verse 9. Tobit, chapter 7, verse 9. So he communicated the matter with Raguel. Mm -hmm. And Raguel said to Tobias, eat and drink and make merry. So right here you have uh, Tobias, you know, uh, you know, dealing with Raguel, which is uh, his future father-in-law, you understand? Um, you know, he, he's uh, pretty much letting him know, uh, you know, in, in the matters of marriage, all right? We're just trying to get to the uh, meat of the story here, okay? Uh, go ahead. Verse 10. For it is me that thou shouldest marry my daughter. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I will declare unto thee the truth. Okay, we'll see. Let's see what was going on with his daughter. Go ahead. Verse eleven. I have given my daughter in marriage to seven men, mm -hmm. who died that night. They came in unto her. Nevertheless, for the present, be merry. But Tobias said. I will eat nothing here till we agree and swear one to another. Right, so in this, when we go back to the, to the, uh, the, the gospel, when you have the, I uh, think it's the Pharisees or the Sadducees came up to Christ and asking him about, you know, oh, what if this, you know, the, speaking on the seven, the woman who was married to seven, uh, seven men, this is what they were talking about. All right, just a quick side note. Okay, go ahead. Verse 12. Raguel said, Then take her from henceforth according to the manner, for thou art her cousin, and she is thine, and the merciful power give you good success in all things. Yeah, and in showing also that, you know, our forefathers and our foremothers, they dealt with within their tribe as well. Okay? Just a quick side note as well. Go ahead. Verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, mm -hmm. Behold, 
Take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. So this is before, you know, you know uh, um, Sarah and um, Tobias was, was, was uh, dealing with one another. You know, he went to, his fa- to her father first and, you know, let him know. This is how our forefathers did it. It wasn't some what they teach in society where, you know, you get a girlfriend and, you know, and, you know, you guys, you know, um, get intimate with one another. You're pregnant. Now you go to the father. Now, see, see how everything is set up. Uh, you know, everything is set up on a saint. We understand that when we read in Isaiah, I believe it's the 29th chapter, it talks about how they flipped everything upside down. So this is what the Most High has set up, um, a, a, you know, um, according to marriage, and what does Satan do? He turns it all the way upside down and says, oh, no, you know, get a girlfriend, you know, and, and deal with her, and then show up to the father and say, oh, we're pregnant. Now we have to get married. And that's a lot of the cases, you know, within Israel, you know, even those, those people who don't know Israel, that they're Israel, all right? So we see that he went to her, his father and uh, her father, excuse me, and uh, got his blessing, all right? Go ahead. Verse 14, and called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instrument of covenant, and sealed it. And this is why we deal with, I don't know if anyone, any brother or sister on the line um, has, has gotten married through the church, but this is why we ask brothers and sisters to write out, you know, what you, know, what, what you, what you want from your significant other, you know, in, in dealing with marriage. This is why we, we ask the brothers and sisters to write those things out, so that you know what you're getting into, and you know it's on pieces of paper. It's on a piece of paper, all right. And this is where our forefathers, and this is where we get it from. It's not something that the church, you know, just sat up and pulled up out of the air. This is something that our foremothers, our forefathers did. They wrote it down, wrote down the covenants of, you know, this is what I want, you know, so on and so forth, and you know they would agree. Okay, this is why we ask brothers and sisters to do that, those things. All right, go ahead. Verse 15. Then they began to eat. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 16. After Raguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber and bring her in thither. Right. And so we see that now, uh, you know, now is the, uh, you know, is when they, when they're about to, you know, deal with one to one one with another. Okay. This is, you know, the process came before, uh, before first. He went to his father and then they dealt with one another, okay? And notice how when we read in the law, it, there's no specific law that says, you know, you have to go over here and, and uh, get, talk to the father. You know, the law of marriage is really uh, set up by the community, all right? Not, and that's not saying that it's, it's not a law, but it was, you know, it, it's set up by the community. And then when we go to the books of the law, we see how we cheat our wives, all right? How, how we're not supposed to be putting away our wives or, or cheating on our wives and things like that or cheating on the husbands and things like that, okay? Now, uh, is that it on that arc? Yeah, let's get, uh, we're going to get a First Corinthians 7 now, all right? So now we, you know, we understand. We laid down, you know, the foundation on how our foremothers and forefathers, uh, you know, um, got married and dealt with marriage. You know, some examples from, you know, our forefather Isaac and uh, Tobias, Tobit, we see, we see we see those examples. So now let's get into First Corinthians, the seventh chapter. All right. I know this is uh, uh, one of the chapters you know that you know make may confuse some some brothers and sisters. But uh, Most High willing uh, through His Spirit, you know, we'll get further edification on it tonight. Okay. Once again, we're going into First Corinthians, the seventh chapter. And we're going to start at the first verse. All right. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Okay. Why? Because uh, let's go ahead and read. Go ahead. Verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Right, so we see nevertheless to avoid fornication, you know, 
you know, you should get a mar- a woman, uh, a wife or a husband, because the scripture, you know, the scriptures is against going around and sleeping with whoever you want to sleep with, because you have other, you know, um, doctrines within, you know, Israel today that teach that you know you could go ahead and deal with whoever you want to deal with, and things and, and things and so forth. You can have as many wives as you want to have. Right now, we're not in a position to have four or five wives, two wives. Not in a position as a nation. We can't. And we could can barely take care of our, you know, our, 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 our only wife. You understand? So now you have doctrines within Israel that, that teach, yeah, I go ahead and, you know, just go ahead and deal with however many wives you can deal with. All right? That's, you know, at this point in time that we're in here in a so-called 2014, that's really not the case. Am I saying that? Uh, the scriptures doesn't speak of, you know, having more than one wife. Absolutely not. The, the scriptures, you know, say that. But at this point in time, even in Paul's time, that wasn't the time to be doing that. All right? But like Paul said in the first verse, it's good for a man not to touch a wife, uh, we'll touch a woman. Why? Uh, let's go ahead and read the, because uh, you got to understand, you know, with the woman, or, or even with the husband, you know, it takes up time that, you know, you have, that you could be given to the most high. All right, and this is what Paul was speaking about. He's going to touch on it further in the chapter. All right, go ahead. Verse 3, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, Mm -hmm. and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Okay, hold that. 1 Corinthians 7 and 3, let's get um, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and the 22nd verse. So it says, uh, let the husbands render unto the wife due benevolence or kindness, okay? And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. So, you know, it's a two-way street here, okay? Don't expect your wife to, oh, man, I'm the, I'm the king of this castle, and your wife got to, you know, uh, bow down to you and, and do whatever you want to do. That's not the case. This is why we ask brothers and sisters to write those things out on pieces of paper so it's established. So later on in, 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 your, uh, uh, in your marriage, when your when your wife or your husband starts going against the things that she wrote down that was you know agreed upon and established, now you say hold on man we got this written out boom we need to you know, take take it to the elders and you know and get some counseling on it, all right. This is why it's very important that brothers and sisters write write those things out, make it clear before you get into you know uh, marriage, all right. Once again, we're getting into first uh, Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to start at the 22nd verse. Okay, go ahead. Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as right. unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. Now, is that saying that wives, oh, you just have to go sit in the corner until your husband wants you? No, absolutely not. That's not how our forefathers treated their wives, all right, that's that's not the case because you have, like I said, in, in other Israelite doctrines, they're teaching that, oh, man, the wife is, you know, is nothing. You know, you, uh, you can uh, just get another wife if you want, all right? That's not the case, okay? Uh, go ahead. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Mm-hmm. And he is the savior of the body. So we understand that the order has been set up that the husband is the head of the wife. Now we understand, like in society, let's, let's reference society uh, again. We understand in society the roles have been reversed. We understand that they give all authority to the woman, and the man is nothing. All right. But we understand that when we come back to the scriptures, the Most High is the order that the Most High has set up is the husband is the head, and, and the head of the woman. All right? Go ahead. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And this is why we must get away from all, all, all ways of this world, because they're against these scriptures. You know, they try to uh, empower the woman as, oh, man, you don't need a man, you know, and we all have heard it before. All right, this is why it's very important that we come to, you know, read these scriptures and see how we deal because these scriptures are here for our learning, all right? Well, these writings are not just here to make you feel good and, oh, man, that was a good scripture. 
let me uh, go ahead and do this over here now. You know, as far as learning, we're supposed to be practicing these scriptures, all right, because if we don't, you know, uh, automatically we're going to be practicing the ways of this world because there's no, you know, there is no in-between with the Most High, all right? It's either, you, you know, you're following the Most High or you're not following the Most High, okay? And the Most High has set it up, you know, uh, everything in dealing with life, all right? Like they, like they refer to the Bible, you know, instructions before leaving earth. These are instructions that, you know, or for our learning and for, you know, that we must put into practice, not just read it and say, man, that was a good, oh, man, that was great. I don't, man, I don't know how he did that. And just close the book and just go back to our lives. No, we must put these practices and these scriptures into our lives. All right, go ahead. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and right. gave himself for it. So we understand that this is how our, our husbands, you know, treat your wives, right? You know, don't just walk over your wife and say, go give me, oh, man, go give me some knee. You're my wife. I'm your head. You know, uh, you're out of order. You know, no, nah, that's how we treat our wives. You know, Christ loved the church. Christ gave his life for the church. And this is how we must treat our wives. And women and, and uh, wives and vice versa, all right, with all due benevolence like our uh the Apostle Paul said. Now let's get back to 1 Corinthians 7 chapter. Hopefully brothers and sisters are holding that in 1 Corinthians 7. We're going to uh, pretty much break down about to the 17th verse because after the 17th verse it kind of goes into something different. Okay, well it goes into something different, excuse me. So hold your spot in 1 Corinthians 7. We're going to be referring back to that. We're just going to get uh, other precepts to get further understanding on uh, 1 Corinthians 7 chapter. Okay, so uh, go ahead and uh, pick up where you left off at. All right. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. Mm-hmm. The ahead. wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. Right. And, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Right, and, and what is Paul speaking on here? We're going to continue to read. Go ahead. Verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, Salakia, verse 5, defraud ye not one the other, mm-hmm. except it be with consent for a time, right. that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Right, and, and, uh, inconsistency. So we see that, you know, our, uh, you know the wife doesn't... Uh, All right, uh, we see that the wife um, doesn't have power of her own body and, and her husband uh, and, 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 you know, and vice versa. And this is in dealing with, you know, uh, intimacy, all right? So, you know, and that's not saying that, oh, every time he says, you know, he, you know, he wants to, you know, uh, lay down, I have to lay down. That's not what it's talking about, all right? But don't just, you know, hold, this, hold, hold him or, or, you know, vice versa, her hostage, and that they're burning to do something, but you said, nah, I don't want to do it. Nah, nah, nah. Because then, you know, Satan, that, that leaves a, a, a gateway for Satan to come in and, and put in, you know, that co-worker that he's seeing at work or she's seeing at work. You understand that spirit, you know, he, you know, he got, you know is burning inside, and he's, you know, uh, he's not being desired, you know, the, uh, it's not being fulfilled within his, uh, his home. So, what, you know, what's Satan going to do? Satan's going to come in. Man, you know, and put thoughts in, in, in uh, a brother's and sister's mind. That person who you never used to look at, you know, look at him one time and say, man, whoa, you understand? But this is what happens when, you know, inconsistency, all right? Satan uh, tempts brothers and sisters with that, okay? And when we read uh, the definition of marriage in, uh, in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, uh, uh, Malak, do you have your uh, Zondervan Bible Dictionary with you? Yeah, I forgot it. All right, let let me bring that uh, marriage out because I, uh, it's a great um, definition of marriage. All right, I just want right. to uh, add out, you know, to get a further understanding on on uh, you know what marriage is. All right, so if we can bring that out, uh, Baba Kasha, uh, which is please in Hebrew. Okay. All right. Uh, this is out of your Zondervan's uh, Compact Bible Dictionary. 
uh, marriage is an intimate personal union to which a man and woman consent. Right. Consummated, consummated and continuously nourished by sexual intercourse. Right. So and perfect. Can, sorry. All right, yeah, that was, that was pretty the main part. Go ahead, go finish that off. And perfected in a lifelong partnership of mutual love and commitment. Right, so we see, you know, we, we don't want to get too graphic. We apologize if it was too graphic. But we understand that that's how it's nourished, you know, through, you know, uh, through intimacy. Okay, so it's not, you know, uh, this is why, you know, it's important, you know, that's how the, that's how the marriage is nourished, through intimacy. So, you know, if you're just holding back and say, oh, man, no, not, not tonight, all right, no. Then, you know, you got to understand that, you know, your, your partner who is, who is burning, you know, saying that, you know, he's uh, – easy to, you know, uh, be taken down by Satan. Because understand that Satan is very, very smart, all right? So he'll find ways to, you know, throw your partner off, and they, now you, next thing you know he's committing adultery uh, or she's committing adultery, okay? All right, let's go ahead. All right, verse, uh, First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. Right, so this isn't a commandment. You know, Paul's just speaking this. He's writing these things. This is not a commandment, okay? I'm going to make that clear. Okay, go ahead. Verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself. Mm -hmm. But every man has his proper gift of the Most High, one after this manner and another after that. All right, so now let's get uh, St. Matthew with a uh, quick precept. We're going to get to St. Matthew, the 19th chapter, and the 12th verse. All right, for I would that all men were even as myself. Paul didn't have a wife. So he's saying, you know, uh, I would that all men were, you know, had, had, had no wives. Why? Because, you know, it would give more time to the Most High. All right, even as the Most High. But every man has his proper gift. So he understands that, you know, not every man is made you know, to be as he was, all right? Let's get the understanding of what Paul was speaking on there. Let's go ahead and uh, get St. Matthew, and uh, we're going to go to the 19th chapter, and we're going to start at the 12th verse. St. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 12. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, right. and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Right. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Right. And, and Paul was, we can say, you know, going back and, and, and understand, you know, and understanding the apostle Paul, we understand that he was a eunuch, you know, uh, made for, you know, the kingdom uh, of heaven's sake. Right. Because, you know, who, who, Let's say that Paul had a wife. Who knows that, you know, he would be writing all these letters and the, uh, the epistles that he wrote. You know, you know, maybe he only writes a couple. Who knows? But he was made a eunuch for the kingdom's sake so that, you know, all his time was devoted to the Most High. All right? So in, this, in a eunuch, if brothers and sisters are unaware of what a eunuch is, it's uh, someone who, who's uh, unmarried. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, so someone who was unmarried. All right, and we know what marriage is according to the scriptures now. Someone who doesn't deal with one with with someone else. So we understand that Paul was made that eunuch for the kingdom's sake. All right. Now let's get back to First Corinthians the seventh chapter. All right. First Corinthians chapter seven right. verse eight. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, uh -huh. it is good for them if they abide even as I. Right, and what and we understand what Paul Paul how Paul abided, didn't have a significant other. Okay, go ahead. Verse nine. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Right, so he says if you can't control yourself, if every person you see or you know, you know, the opposite sex, if every every you know, person of that opposite sex you see walking down the street, you can't control yourself. You better marry, right? Why? Let's let's get the understanding on why. Let's get um, First Corinthians chapter six. We're gonna go uh, back a chapter. 
All right, First Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start at the 15th verse. All right, I mean, I, it should be clear to brothers and sisters why, but, you know, we want to bring out the uh, precepts to get further understanding on it. All right, once again, First Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start at the uh, 15th verse. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Right. Shall I, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harvest? Most high forbid. All right, so you're, you know, you are, you know, representation of Christ. So Christ, and he's going to touch on it, touch it, on it in the uh, next few verses. Christ wasn't, you know, going around and, and, and uh, lusting and sleeping out, uh, sleeping with whoever you wanted. So understand that. You know, when, when you get baptized, you know, you put on Christ. You, and, and what does that mean? You know, you follow in his footsteps. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Mm-hmm. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Right. Go ahead. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Most High is one spirit. Go ahead. One spirit. All right. Go ahead. Verse 18. Flee fornication. Mm -hmm. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Mm -hmm. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Right. So when you, when you, when you, when you, uh, you know, committing fornication, this is what Paul was letting, you know, uh, those people who are unmarried and widows, uh, letting them know, like, if if you can't control yourself, you know, that urge is just taking over you, you're going to slip up. So you better hurry up and go get married or what? You're going to be committing fornication or just shacking up with who looks good, all right? And the scriptures are completely, totally against that, okay? All right, let's get back to the seventh chapter, all right? Go ahead and uh, pick up where you left off at. I believe you left off at uh, the 10th verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Right. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Right. So let not the wife depart from her husband. So we, when we read in uh, Malachi, the second chapter, like, actually, let's get that. I believe it's Malachi chapter 2, uh, verse 15, 15 or 16, you know, this, uh, the Most High is totally against divorce. You understand? The Most High is against that completely. So what they're teaching here in society, like, we, like we've covered, you know, earlier within this lesson, uh, we understand uh, how Satan, who is in control now, we understand the earth is given to the wicked. Satan being in charge, he'll flip, he'll flip it all upside down. He says, oh, yeah, divorce is the answer. You have marriage problems, divorce is your answer. Don't even don't even, you know, try to work it out. He's never gonna he's never gonna change. She's never gonna change. That's the spirit, you know, the Satan pulls out there. You know, and now you're thinking, man, you're never gonna change. Satan put those thoughts in your mind and now you're saying <clears throat> excuse me. Now you're saying, all right, divorce is the answer. And this is what they're teaching in society. But we when we read the scriptures, now let's let's read that in Malachi. Uh Malachi Chapter 2, I believe it's verse 16. You want me to start at uh, verse 14? Yeah, go ahead and start at verse 14. The water. All right. All right. Malachi, chapter 2, verse 14. Yet ye say, wherefore, because the Most High hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, mm-hmm. against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, Yet right. is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Right. You know, you dealt treacherously with her. You know, you're having rough times with her. Yet she's thy companion and thy wife of thy covenant. Okay? And, and one of the, what was part of the covenant like we co- covered earlier, like when we read in the book of Tobit, you know, that, that, uh, you know, that piece of paper that you wrote down. Now, don't look at the piece. Oh, man, that's just a piece of paper. We can throw it away. Understand that that's a covenant. You know, that was agreed upon. Well, on both side, of both parties, you understand, and that was established. Whatever is established here on earth, let it be established also in the heavens. All right, go ahead. 
Verse 15, and did not he make one? Right. Yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Godly Therefore seed, take right. heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. So let none deal treacherously. All right, go ahead. Verse 16, for the Most High, the power of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Most High of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that ye deal not treacherously. So we understand that when we read this scripture right here, the Most High hates. It's something that the Most High hates. Now, now you have people out there, oh, man, the Most High is an all-lovely God. But you see that one of the things he hates, and, uh, you know, when we read Proverbs, there's a few couple of things the Most High hates. Uh, but right here we see that the Most High hates putting away. All right, but like I said, everything's flipped upside down. Satan tells you divorce is your answer. All right. And and we understand when we read the scriptures here, the most high hates that. All right. Because he understands, you know, Satan, all Satan wants to do is break up your families. Now your child going to see the, your dad, his dad on the weekend, you got two rooms and, you know, his, his dad, you know, everything's all messed up now. All right. Messes up the child. The child is, a, you know, now he grows up and he's all messed up. All right. Understand that that, that that takes a toll on, on a, a child, all right? This is why the Most High hates putting away, because he understands what, what, what's going to come of it. It not only affects, you know, the wife and the husband, but it also affects the children, the seed, like, like uh, the Most High mentioned there, the godly seed, all right? Let's get back to First Corinthians, all right? Uh, I believe First Corinthians chapter seven, and we'll pick up at uh, verse verse eleven. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse eleven. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Right, but if she depart, let her remain un unmarried. All right, so that means if, you know, you guys separate, uh, you know, it could be for a time. But don't be going out and trying to get another husband, like, uh, because you are still married to that man. And anyone who, who deals with you, let's actually get that. Uh, I believe that's in St. Luke, the 16th chapter. I believe Christ covers it. Uh, I know it's, um, there's a couple uh, instances where he references this within the gospel, but one that comes to mind is Luke's the 16th chapter, and I believe it's like around the 18th verse. All right, let, let's actually get that one. Because he references right. it within the gospel. I just can't recall the other gospels' uh, recordings. But uh, I believe it's in Luke 16 and 18. St. Luke, chapter 16, verse 18. Right, go ahead. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth right. adultery. Mm -hmm. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. Right. So we see that, you know, when uh, you, well, you put away, you, you know, your wife or, you know, you got to separate for a while. Uh, that doesn't say, okay, go ahead and deal with whoever you want to do it. And what does they teach in society? Oh, you know, we're, we're on a break. You know, we, we can do whatever we want. You know, right now we're just on a break and, you know, uh, we'll come back to one another. But now, you know, we want to, you know, go out and, you know, and then uh, – Mingle. You understand? This is what they teach in society, something that's completely against the scriptures. This is why, you know, I'm trying to, you know, uh, just express how important it is that we get away from everything that the world has been teaching us. It's important that brothers and sisters just don't even think of the ways of this world. Come to these scriptures because the scriptures are the key to life. You understand? These scriptures, this is the most highest word. He's laying everything out right here. All we have to do is follow it by saying, oh, that is easy. No, absolutely not. You know, it's a tough walk, but we can, you know, you know, we persevere through everything. We can make it. Christ showed us that we can make it. All right, so let's stop running to the world, to the world and, and try to get answers to our problems. That all our answers that we, that, that, uh, we need to our issues, problems, 
are here in these scriptures. All right. It's important, and uh, I didn't mean to get too you know too far off, but I really wanted to stress that. All right. So we understand Christ said, whosoever put away his wife marrieth another committed adultery. So you are still tied to that woman. You, know, you guys haven't made that official boom. You know, we're separating. Uh, you're still tied to that woman. You're committing adultery with whoever you lay with. And whoever lays with you, they're committing adultery as well. All right. Just wanted to touch that point. Let's get back to First Corinthians, the seventh chapter. First Corinthians, yeah, go ahead, chapter right. 7, verse 11. Go ahead. But, and if ye depart, let her remain unmarried, right. or be reconciled to her husband, mm -hmm. and let not the husband put away his wife. So the scriptures are completely against, you know, divorce. All right. Go ahead. Verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she uh -huh. be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Right. So, uh, you know, if you have a wife, and this comes to, you know, kind of to the realm that we're dealing with right now, you know, and, and awakening of who we are, we understand that within his, within his body here on the West Coast, we understand that there are couples within the body when I say couples, where there are brothers and sisters within the body whose significant other is, you know, is against, you know, what they're believing in, but they still, you know, it's pleasing them to dwell with them. So don't think that just because they don't believe, oh, man, I have an unbelieving husband, I have to put him away now, or an unbelieving wife, I have to put her away now. You know, Paul's in a touch on this. So don't just run up and say, I got to go find some, uh, someone in the truth. No. You don't know what if if that at that particular point in time is the time for you know your husband or your wife to get this understanding. You know we're all on the most high the most highest clock. All right, so don't think that after a couple of months you're showing your your significant other the scriptures and he's not believing or she's not believing, then I gotta go go boom. I gotta give up because that's the mentality that we've been taught in this in society. Just give up. Divorce is the answer. You don't got to deal with this guy no more. No, Paul's not saying put him away. If, if they want to dwell with you, let, hey, let him dwell with you. Don't put her away. All right, go ahead. Verse 13. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Right. And now you have also instances where You'll have um, brothers and sisters, and most I will, and this is not within the body, brothers and sisters who seek after someone who is not in the truth. And let's get that in uh, uh, Second Corinthians, I believe it's the sixth chapter, where it talks about being unequally yoked. Because it's, it's one thing if you come into this understanding and, you know, your significant other is, you know, is, doesn't really want, you know, to uh, indulge in what you believe in and things like that. But, hey, you know, they're willing to dwell with you. You know, be that light to them. You understand? Your ways, you know, who knows, man? This is why, you know, it's important that we don't give up trust in the most high. All right? Don't just give up and say, oh, man, it's, it's, and take the easy way out and say, boom, I, I, I want to go sign some papers. This is what they promote society. Um, you know, sign papers. Things is a song like that. All right. This is what's being promoted in society. But that's one thing if you know your husband doesn't believe or your wife doesn't believe. But it's another thing if you're going out and seeking after someone who's not in the truth. That that's something that completely you should not be doing. And we're going to show you through the scriptures. All right. Let's get. Uh, and most high women, that's not. You know taking place here within the body, all right? All right, let's, I believe that's, uh, did you find that verse? I, uh, I forgot yeah, to write that one. All right, the water. I got Go it. Ahead. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. All right, go ahead. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? 
None, right? There's no no fellowship of righteousness with that with unrighteousness, and what communion has with light with darkness. So does that say that anyone who doesn't believe just don't deal with them, like or don't even talk to? Hey, you guys are unrighteous. Nah, that's not what it's talking about. What it's talking about is being unequally yoked, like come, you know, trying to say, well, oh, this person over here, I'm gonna go and save them. When when in reality, that's not your main objective. Your main objective is, you know, your eyes see something, and now you're lusting after, now you want to pursue it, all right? We encourage that, you know, the single members within the body, that you, you know, you, you pursue someone who, who's in life, who, who has a uh, like mind, all right? Someone who is in the truth and understanding. Don't seek after someone who is, you know, unrighteous and out of it, you know, all into the world. That's why Paul says, do not be unequally yoked. So I pray that, you know, brothers and sisters are not seeking after, you know, uh, unrighteous brothers and sisters or, 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 in other words, those people who are in the world because now you're dealing with something something else, you understand? Now there are spirits that are in the world, they're coming to you. Who knows? You may be overtaken. You say that your, your objective, your mission was to save, I'm going to go save this person right here. Now you need saving. This is why Paul is saying, hey, man, don't even do it. All right? And I really wanted to touch that point because, it's, you know, it's important that brothers and sisters are not seeking after those things. All right? Let's go ahead and get and get back to it. Also, I really want to touch this point also. Let's get uh, Sirach, Ecclesiasticus. Uh, let's get Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, and we're going to start at the first verse. All right? And dealing with, you know, uh, a partner not being, you know, like-minded as us, you know. There's a reason behind it, all right. Some people, you know, love to run and, oh, man, you're out of order. What's going on with you? I don't know why, you know, what what, what were you thinking? You know, a lot of arguments going on. Uh, <clears throat> I, I've been, uh, you know, uh, I've had the knowledge of understanding, you know, some brothers and sisters' relationships and understand that, when it comes to this truth, there's a lot of arguments, all right? Because you have brothers who are, you know, sisters who are in the world coming to this new understanding, and it goes against everything that they've been taught. So, of course, Satan is there, and arguments start up, all right? So you have, uh, like, we're, like we're touching on, you have one uh, person who believes and the other person who doesn't. And, you, and you, you're trying to figure out, man, why are you, why are you acting this way? Why did the most I give you to me? And we're going to see why, okay? First, let's get that in, uh, well, we're going to cover it in Sirach 26, chapter, in your, apoc- in your apocrypha, all right? Uh, once again, that's Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, uh, chapter 26. Uh, we're going to start at the first verse. Sirach, chapter 26, verse 1. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, right. for the number of his days shall be doubled. All right. So he blesses the one who has a virtuous wife today. The number of his days shall be double. Less stress. You know, you have a virtuous wife, you know, uh, things like that. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 2. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, mm-hmm. and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. All right. That's why his days will be double. All right. Less arguing, less stressing. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 3. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Most High. Right. And, and we we'll read that part again. Verse 3. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Most High. So we see that, you know, those people who, who uh, fear the Most High, you, you know, receive a good wife. All right. And now let's jump down to, uh, I want to touch that one point on here. Uh, go ahead and read the next verse. Verse 4. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Most High, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. All right, go ahead. Let's jump down to verse 23. All right, 23. Let's jump down to verse 23. So we're going to stand that a good wife is given to, to those who fear the Mosai, all right? 
Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 23. A wicked woman, uh, Slovakia, a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Mm-hmm. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the most high. So like I was saying earlier, <clears throat> if you're having problems and you want to blame it all on that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you want to blame it all on um, your, your significant other and say, man, you just don't believe. You got to, you know, you read these scriptures, you got to see maybe I'm doing something wrong. You understand? Maybe I'm wicked. You understand what I'm saying because it says the wicked woman is given to a wicked, wicked man. All right? So don't always just blame, oh, man, that guy, you know, your significant other who doesn't believe. Don't, don't, don't just use that. Just cop out and say, okay, that's the answer right there. I got it. You're wicked. I, I, I'm right. I'm following the most high. I keep the Sabbath. You understand? You're wicked. I don't know about you. You, so, you got to start thinking about well, what are you doing. All right? Don't just point the finger like, like, um, I don't know if we covered this before, when brothers uh, seek after, oh, man, I wish I had Sarah. Oh, man, I need Sarah, man. Why is my wife not acting like Sarah? I believe we covered this in the Virtuous Sisters uh, lesson. Why is my wife not acting like Sarah? Well, are you acting like Abraham? You understand? So it's a give and take. It's not just your wife has to be Sarah. You have to be Abraham as well. Okay? I really want to touch that point as well. Because a lot of uh, brothers and sisters who have that issue within their relationship, they cop out and say, oh, man, that, that man, you're wicked. All right, let's get back to uh, First Corinthians, First Corinthians the seventh chapter. All right, uh, hopefully brothers and sisters are holding that. It's First Corinthians 7, a few more precepts. Uh, let's stick with us here. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get that. First Corinthians. Chapter 7, verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Right, and that's precepting back what we read in Malachi. So don't just put away, and this is getting back, you know, the most high hates putting away and divorce. So don't just divorce and cop out. You understand, brothers and sisters? Your ways may change him. You know, may change your significant other. That's why it says, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. So if the wife is doing what the Most High says, you know, and, and the Most High Spirit is, is on her and all her doings, that spirit, you know, that residue of the spirit can rub off on the unbeliever. And now, you, who knows, you know, you, the unbeliever uh, partner, you understand, now they're saying, oh, okay, I see how, man, this has really changed you. Not for the, the worse, but for the better. You know, now you know, I want to see what you're doing, man, because whatever you're doing change you like this. Man, this is, I, I love this. Now that spirit is on, on, on the unbeliever. Now he wants to engage into this understanding. So we must be that light. We must make sure that we're doing our job and, be, and following these scriptures and that the most high spirit is leading us. Because if we're led by any other spirit, it's not going to work. You understand? It's not going to work. That, that person is going to stay an unbeliever. This is why we must operate within these law, statutes, and commandments that the Most High says. You understand? Follow what the Most High has laid out. Follow, follow our foremothers and our forefathers and what they left behind for us to follow. Follow those things. The Most High Spirit will be on us, and the residue of that spirit, like we read in Malachi, the second chapter, will start to rub off on the unbeliever. So don't just give up. Just, oh, man, I'm throw the towel, and I, I'm going to fight someone who's already in the truth. Who knows? You know, that person who you're with right now, that could be that, that, uh, that talent, like, like the most high, uh, Christ says he gives us talent, that we, you know, we, you know bringing people, spreading the gospel. You know, that, that unbeliever could be a talent, that, you know, you bring in, you bring into this understanding. So don't give up. This is what we must stress. Do not give up. You know, continue to follow the Most High, <clears throat> trust in the Most High, you understand? And, and uh, you know, it all comes to pass in time. All right, the Most High's will will be done. Okay, go ahead. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. 
A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but the Most High hath called us to peace. Right, so and then, then you have, may have someone say, "Oh man, I thought the scripture says uh, don't don't uh, don't put them away, don't don't depart." You're not under bondage in such cases. If the unbeliever doesn't want to dwell with you man, and say, "Oh man, you changed, man, I'm out of here," and the spirit is and the evil spirits on that person to where it compels them to get up, pack up, and leave, hey, let them leave. You understand? You're not under the bondage or, you know, under that dominion, as you read in Romans, the seventh chapter, in the seventh verse, talks about uh, being under the, uh, let's actually get that. I don't want to, I don't want to misquote it, paraphrase it, but we can get it, okay? Uh, let's get that. Romans, uh, the seventh chapter, it's just the, uh, one, one book over, brothers and sisters, uh, one book back, excuse me, uh, Romans, the seventh chapter. And we're going to start at the first verse. Let's just read the first verse. All right. Uh, Romans what? chapter 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. That know that the law. The law mm-hmm. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Right, so now you have, uh, so... Paul is speaking to those people who know the law. Now, when you know the law in dealing with marriage, when you know the law of marriage, you understand that there are stipulations within the law of marriage, okay? It's not just, oh, man, I'm bound to this person till death do us part. Understand that there's stipulations that must happen. You understand? That's not saying, okay, say, say, say you get married, right, and now you're bound. You say, oh, man, I'm bound. Whatever he does... It doesn't matter. I'm bound to him. That's not the case. This is why Paul says, I speak to those who know the law. You understand? So don't just say, uh, man, he can do whatever he wants because, man, I'm bound. The Most High bound me to this man, and I don't want to break the Most High's law. That goes to show that you don't know the Most High's law because there are stipulations that must, you know, happen within, within uh, that are, excuse me, that are in place to where uh, there's laws of marriage. You understand? You can't cheat on your wife. You can't go out and commit adultery. You understand? Sleep with another man's wife. You understand? So Paul speaks to those who know the law. All right, go ahead. Verse 2. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. Right. But if the, but if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So now when we read this in First Corinthians, the seventh chapter, is Paul is Paul being double-minded and saying one thing here and saying something different over there? Absolutely not. This is why people may confuse Paul's writings. So now that we read this, let's get back to First Corinthians 7 and uh, clear it up. Okay? First Corinthians 7, and we're going to read, uh, excuse me, uh, verse... Verse 16, uh. Oh, excuse me, the water. Go ahead, read verse 16. No, 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 no. I want to read that. I want to read uh, verse 15 to tie it all in. Uh, verse 15. Uh, first Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But the Most High hath called us to peace. Right, so the brother or sister is not under bondage or under that dominion that Romans the seventh chapter spoke of, that that you're bound to that person. You're not under that bondage or under that dominion uh, in in uh, in such cases. All right, if the unbeliever wants to depart, let him depart. Don't go out and chase after him and oh, I want you back. I'll change. Then now you're allowing that spirit of Satan to come on you. You're saying you're changing. Now, you know, you're starting to get back at Jesus. Next thing, you, next thing you know, you're all the way into the world. You understand? And that's how it starts. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 16. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Right, so Paul is saying, hey, man, you know, you stick it out with, your, with, with, your, with, with that significant other who doesn't believe. Hey, man, who knows? Like, like I said earlier, you know, 
that could be that could be that person who you bring to the most high and say, look, man, I, I changed this person. Through my actions and through your spirit, I was able to uh, minister to him and uh, or her and change him and bring him into this understanding. So who knows, man, you could be that person who saves that unbelieving partner. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 17. But as the Most High hath distributed to every man, as the Most High hath called everyone, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. So, right, so it's like, and Paul just wraps it up right here. We're on the Most High's clock, okay? It's the Most High who who, who will bring that person in. Don't just give up. It, it, right now cannot be, you know, it may not be the time for that partner to come into this understanding. All right, so just don't give up. We're on the most size clock. Do your job, and the most high, you know, will do the rest. All right, but but I want to make that clear first. Do your job. All right, make sure you're doing all that you can in righteousness, so that your spirit will rub off on this on that unbeliever. All right, and like I said, that's not saying go out and find an unbeliever and try to change them. No, do not be unequally yoked. Okay. So with that, all praise to the Most High, Most High willing through His Spirit, uh, brothers and sisters were edified on this topic in dealing with marriage. All right, um, let's go ahead and bring it out of the bar. <laughs>